when you hear the name Ironhide, it's usually one of two characters. That really lovable red van guy from the show, or this guy from the movies who everyone is mad died. So I'm going to show an Ironhide you wish died. Energon Ironhide. This guy has a reputation for, for being one of not only the most annoying characters, but also the worst reinterpretations of a beloved one. Bad dubbing of the anime didn't exactly help. But despite all that, he has a good toy, so let's focus on that, shall we? He's a big, chunky truck with floodlights more useful than the actual lights. Big things of fuel, which no one's the same is gonna need. And no real bumper, but he has fits instead. Well done. It rolls fabulously, not only because of the very well-constructed wheels with the pins and hugeness, but also the whole thing is so heavy. It has lots of momentum. Glorious stuff. And I know, I know what you're thinking. Yes, there's a gun missing, which, yes, sucks, but he was eight bucks at a thrift shop. It's fine. I'm amazed he's at all complete. And yeah, he has a head. But you know what? It's the future. Transformers aren't exactly secret anymore, so why not stand out? Plus, if you learn to drive, he'd be very useful. I realize this is an awkward way to show it, but check it out. Because alternators was a new thing at the time, I believe. They decided, hey, we're going to have some vague detailing on the inside. A steering wheel that jiggles a little. And some seats. Which makes it all the more galling that this front windshield isn't clear. Come on, the one time we want that stuff. This being the good old days of Energon, they decided no big toy is complete without a bunch of sound gimmicks. To this end... And if I had the other gun, I'd be able to show you more effectively. A very bird-like rocket. I was kind of dreading this part of the review because not only do I have the most awkward setup for the camera possible, but this is a huge thing that kind of requires space. So I'm going to have to hunch over my iPad to even hope to show you this. So uh, sorry in advance if it sucks. What I love about the Unicron Trilogy, things were simple, but not to the point of being boring. Shut up. They made sure that the transformation sets were unique and memorable. Like the way the feet go out two ways, and the arm is swinging around to the front of the figure. And in just a few seconds, we have an iron hide with these legs. Or it'd be like that. I love this robot mode. It is so incredibly distinctive. It's not like anything else you've seen. And despite most of the alt mode stuff ending up as part of the body, there's still a lot of new stuff thanks to this being covered up by the legs. All molded parts and paint apps. And a surprisingly sullen face for this guy. I'd have liked something more akin to the anime, but I mean, the toys did come first, so the show's gonna look stylized. If you want a little more in the realm of gimmicks, you got options. Cheeky spot for an Energon star. On you go. Shut up. And a little Minicon port, which doesn't do anything, but you can have it anyway. I'm gonna put a Micromaster here, just cause I'm quirky. <sighs> so, I mean, that's not his main gimmick. We'll get to that. The possibility is pretty good, considering this came right after Armada, the era of bricks. Check it out. Shut up. The legs work wonders. And yes, there are so many ratchets. It is sublime. Right. If you know anything about Energon, you're gonna know that for the Autobots, it was kind of like Combiner Wars. So everyone is a combiner. And I'm gonna show off the legs first, because I'm lazy. Shut up. Also, you can put this part wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. Kibble, no matter how you do it. And... Legs do a surprising amount for just flipping around a bit. Very satisfying to move around. I often find myself doing it absentmindedly, even knowing I don't have any other guys to go with this. And here we have some legs. 
These are very chunky legs that can support basically anything you put on top, I assume. And they're still very poseable. Probably a bit more so given the slight decrease in bulk back here. Oh, cool. I've often seen eBay sellers have the normal robot mode with these legs because, oh, it's taller, it's gonna look more impressive. Top mode, right. Let's see if I can do this without losing my mind. So, shut up. You might feel like you're gonna break it the first time, but you know what? It's solid. Shut up. Oh, I need to plan first. Ugh. Get these around. Set it down because I can't handle that much weight. I'm out of shape. Blech. And then. Yeah, these are very chunky. Very, very chunky. And here's a disembodied torso. Posability is not fantastic here, but the silhouette is great. Big, wide, and powerful. And curiously, they never thought to have a dedicated combined mode head for these, so it's still the same guy you partially tolerate. Every time I find an iron hide in the store that I kinda want, I end up not going for it because I already know I've got a great one. The movie ones are all very, very haphazard. The Bumblebee one is loose. Loose. And the 86 one is actually alright, but I kinda don't care. So this one wins by default. So yeah, I'd go for it. There's a green ray paint of it, which is pretty neat. Yeah. Take her. <laughs> 